Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Equestrian War. I'm your host, Mr. Posada Lover. But the last charge of the MZ, Major Flare Bright wasn't sure what to make of the site before and all around him. The newcomers were zebras, but not Carthaginians, or Zenons, or Zumidians. They wore everything between desert or drab desert camo, and traditional warrior garments carried ancient looking guns, which were probably older than Fair, uh, Flare Bright's grandmother, and many had battle scars. What was most astonishing? What he had dismissed when his scouts had reported it was a sheer number. An entire brigade's worth of zebras had simply emerged from the desert, appearing like a mirage in the heat now. They stood at attention as though on parade, with a single grizzled mare trotting out in front of them to meet Flare Bright. Greetings, said Flare Bright. I'm the commander of the 92nd Royal Infantry Battalion, Major Flare Bright. Why have thousands, uh, several thousand armed zebras showed up in an active war zone unannounced? I'm Zagwa the Ironbreaker. We were the last war host of Zerantia, the commander replied, speaking Arisian with a thick accent. We have fought the murderous moon worshipping uh, wor worshippers ever since they broke Zeranti and killed Agulin. We are here to fight alongside you to claim revenge on them for what they've done. Flare Blight sh shivered, realizing the severity of the moment uh, as his own soldiers started peeking out of their positions at the newcomers. Of course, I've heard of what the Cheer Up Terrans did to your people. I'll bring you to my commanders, and I'm sure they'll accept your service. Zeranti will rise again if Eris can. You don't understand, do you? The zebra laughed bitterly. Zeranti's already dead. We were to build his, uh, build his funeral pyre out of the Cheer Up Terran corpses. The Cheer Up Terrans will pay for what they have done. Nice. Okay, charger divisions. Oh, uh, we'll probably honestly won't use those, but um, destroy the methods of, methods of war. War is a horrific affair, and, and nowhere is that more evident than the horrors brought out with strategic bombing, carpet bombing, napalm, and worse coat whole cities. Uh, such suffering is incalculable, and is dub doubly awful how many could have been made been comrades. Nonetheless, we must engage in their dirty practice ourselves. Every bullet stopped from reaching the front line is a comrade safe. Using an anthem. The Supreme Workers' Council debated several proposed options for new anthem for the revolutionary North Zebrica. While Posada vigorously argued for the Internationale, which, as she said, reflected the dreams of liberation for every worker, two of the songs garnered substantial approval among the delegates. The first, uh, the Aggressive People's War, had a substantial appeal among the more militaristic elements of the RWP. And its upbeat and bombastic rhythm made it a favorite among many hippogriffs outside the party. It's also a new song, composed in Hippogriffia itself, as part of the new musical movements, which has sprung up after a revolution, as opposed to the International, which is more of a classic. The other proposal is called 14 Minutes to Launch, and reflects the dreams of a space flight which have grips many of the younger, more technologically minded communists. With that said, others have dismissed it. That's effectively putting the entire nation's hopes on technocratic cliques, as ultimately only very few will be involved in any space program, and it is still an open question whether one will succeed. The debate raged well into the night. But in the end, the Supreme Workers' Council came to the decision, well, the communists have the music. Culture is a core part of society, and revolutionary culture must be promoted. Every form of the art shall be cultivated and brought to life so that the proletarian can truly enjoy life. Labor songs will be sung throughout the land, murals depicting the might of the workers shall be painted, and all will share in its benefits and joys. So, and we're going to uh, integrate North Zebrico. Zumidia and Warzena, the, these places have been burdened by capitalism and reaction, but at last we freed them. Now I must organize our administration, rule the kinder fin, and welcome our brothers and sisters into the fold of revolutionary communism. International, arise ye prisoners of starvation, arise ye wretched of the earth, for justice thunders condemnation of better worlds and birth. People's world will inspire soldiers, and noble anger leads us to victory over the fascist scum. Arise our mighty land, arise for the people's war. Fourteen minutes launched and our dreams of the stars, so let us sing together. We saw fourteen minutes before we start the engines and leave the world behind. Supreme Workers Council deadlocks and the pre-revolutionary anthem remains. God save our grateful people, long live our noble people, God save the peoples. Um, I kind of have international, because Posada said that, so I'm going to go with that one probably. You know, I like all of them. I'm going to go with that one. But we're doing quite well in this war. Uh, where are we at? Where are we here? So we've actually done quite well. Um, they've taken a little less than half a million casualties. We've almost suffered 34,000. We have a decent amount of manpower still. I think Col the Genian Republic has taken almost 100,000 casualties. We're out of guns. Artillery's okay. Um, and we have, I split our main task force into two fleets. Uh, two task force, I guess, really. So, Ooh, do you have uh, anything else here? Flight director, lancer, destroyer. It's not bad. Um, and we have two here too, and a fast bomb ship. So we're oh, covered. Should be decent from here on out. Uh, subs are looking okay. We've taken three casualties overall, but we've taken out the capital already. So, uh, oh, we have the first vision as well. One. Posada screamed as the lightning coursed through her. Her entire body convulsed, desperately trying to find some escape, some respite, some relief from the agony. Please, she begged mercy. Now, where would be the fun in that? Her bearded tormentor gloated. Besides, what can I say? It's fun seeing you like this. But Sada looked up to the cruel, pitiless eyes of the Storm King. She tried to find some words, but the agony of the lightning was too much. It cackled cruelly. So you thought me dead, did you? D didn't you ever think that someone would put me back together? And now you and your little revolutionary state of mind. But Sada woke up screaming. Oh boy. Lost quite a few sea ponies, but oh well. Oh, we're trying to attack down here too, huh? Let's go here. 
fast speed? Might as well. There we go. Um, I want to do general attack, but we're just not strong enough yet for that. Especially against the Cult of Genians. So, uh, our goal is to, uh, you know, keep him in place and circle and destroy. Let's see what we can do about that. And you can help out. You can come back here too. Nice. And we destroyed him. Beautiful. Uh, you might just go down here. You might just go right there. So with that in mind, we're actually going to do this and go down here too, too. Nice. We have another division right there. Not ideal, but whatever. Ah, my military factory's good. We need more guns. And we're out of steel. God dang it. Good. Hello. Oh, they're actually taking up here too. That is not ideal. Honestly, we might be able to do this from here on out. Uh, they did beat us over there, but we'll see about that. Can you go in and around? No. Can you install them here? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. So we're going to really destroy the Chirrut Terrans. What are we making that we don't really use a lot of? Toad anti-air. No. Oh. Well, we'll keep making it for now. It's fine. Whatever. Remain task forces. Should be down here too, right? Kabuckian. We're actually pushing into here too. I'll do that. Auckland. All right, so we re we really need to down here. Come on. We need you to destroy them down here because you just opened up a whole new front over here. Terrible. They have naval supremacy in here, which I don't understand why our ships aren't moving faster. Uh, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead, which sucks. I can't do that one. But promote new admirals. Well, they might do that one next, maybe. I right, say so have no one there. Okay, come on. What the heck? Come on! Come on! Oh my god! Come on! It says we're down here. Someone tells me that's a lie. Can we actually move in there finally? My god. Good. Okay, we'll see finally. More army XP finally. What's going on here? Well, can't a lot. Ah, the trip is dead. Good, thank God, Jesus Christ. Well, I've lost Pegasus. Um, go back to your job. Let's see how long we keep these guys here. The moment model distribution. There we go. Should be fine overall. Uh, let's see. Two, over 200,000 casualties. Nice. Set your protest. Uh, or uh, listen to the concern. That's fine. Not super concerned about them right now. And then uh, permanent revolution. The revolution must continue until there is nothing but uh, communism worldwide. We must stand ready to assist our comrades anywhere, anytime, and with whatever they may need. Now you guys can go back up there. Supplies not very good, but it's their auntie. What do you expect? The Union Republic. Just like make a beeline for up there, maybe. More convoys gone. Integrated sea pony stuff. Um, special forces. Capital ship attack is pretty good too. Go to that one. That's unique. A little ahead of time, it's 12. A little ahead of time, a little ahead of time. Oh, 
Nuclear reactors? Why not? Hello, that's not ideal. Can you not get over there? Okay, North Zebrica and the Permanent Revolution. Farmings. Oh, come on. Well, we're doing well anyways, but still. Shiraz. Zagwa. You know what? I didn't have to use Gaunt's commands for any of this. Go figure. Destroy every single convoy you see there. Let me take one at one tick tells, but they're gonna die no matter what too. Ah, oh, Zerontu's gone. Good. Kill them all off there. Good. Empire strikes back. Sack of Skyfall. Oil extraction? Sure. Well, Colt Egg will be ours. Fall Colt Egg. Nice. We delivered almost a million casualties, taking less than 100,000. I'd say it's pretty darn good. From our new admirals, we have the largest and grandest navy in the world, and such a fleet will be, by nature, necessitate new, many new officers. With the sacking of several counter-revolutionary officers, the need is more urgent than ever. Perhaps we can arrange a naval war game for members of the naval commerserat to see which one of these enthusiastic young revolutionaries is fit to command a fleet. Just more guns. My god, so many guns are needed. Keep going, y'all. They're about to give up. Did you literally just skip the current capital? There we go. I'm not sure if we have the options to puppet all these people, but we probably will. Or something. Nice. Oh, look at this. Oh, integrate them. More compliance and 70% less than 5% resistance. It's going to take some time. Well, that's a okay. case. Come down here, maybe? Ah, Triumph of Eris. Comrades, the patriotic war has ended in our complete victory. The period of peaceful development has begun. I congratulate you upon victory, my dear friends, says Posada. That is an incredibly cute picture. Oh my god. Glory to the great victorious people. Awesome. Uh, establish a new government of Wing Body. Wing Body is defeated. We must establish a new government there so that Wing Bodies will no longer be a threat to us. Uh, it's a republic. Oh, we can restart the travel agency too. That one first. With the end of wars plaguing our nation, we can now provide incentives and assistance to the travel industry to once again attract a large swaths of tourists around the world. Hmm. Well, that's pretty good. A luxury for all. Inadequate lives in is inadequate. Good enough is not good enough. Luxury, previously the privilege of the wealthy, can now be the right of all workers. No more shall naysayers claim that the communism is equal sharing of miseries. Nice. The Princess Commodore. The splendid news, the former Prince of Sky Star has found a new place among the vanguard of the revolution, a uh, revolutionary navy. Already highly respected among her comrades for her patience and diligence, Sky Star has elevated the rank of Commissar Commodore. After a, splen uh, a splendid display of bold tactics and clever maneuvering during one of her naval war games, which ended with her successfully at maneuvering and sinking a carrier battle group commanded by far more experienced officers. Although some of the old guard grumbled at beginner's luck, the high naval command has granted her the rank of commodore, but the naval commissariat has co signed the promotion, making her the first commissar commodore on revolutionary North Africa. Congratulations, Skystar! Oh. Comes a political advisor, huh? Daily compliance goes up, but you lose political power. Oh man, that's certainly a give and take, isn't it? Ah, oh, we got the navies. Good. So, who do we have here? Shove them all together. I'll do it that way. Hey! 
a little ahead of time, a little bit too ahead of time for me personally, but whatever. Just in case, maybe, and uh, sure. It's ban less war, ban less war has fulfilled the purpose and there's no place in our army going forward. Some return to Zerantia and others will be resettled. Ministers disagree. Alright, y'all. The Junior Pioneers. The children are the future of the revolution. And it's paramount that they be trained and taught. As communists, we will follow the process to achieve communism. And it will be the children raised in the dictatorship of the proletariat who will finally lead us there. Well, they are not merely pioneers of their peers. They're pioneers for the future for all of us. Nice. Oh, we didn't even do this one yet. Huh. Oops. More bad. Unlocks coring the north decisions. Well, we definitely could use more compliance. Junior pioneers. Praxis is back by theory. Theory without praxis is navel gazing, and praxis without theory is uh, or theory without praxis is navel gazing, and praxis without theory is uh, chaos. Only together can communism be achieved, and so together we shall forge a future. Everyone in the nation shall receive a full education, going as far as they desire, but be it technical, academic, or martial, no one shall be untaught. Maybe more fuel? I don't want to do this one because we might go back to war soonish. Maybe? I don't know. Subs? I do like that one, though. Now, hello. Now, if you say that, here. Do that. Let's start making one. And we need some steel, really. There you go. We can edit all that stuff soon, too. Whee! All this stuff in here. So, do we get them as a puppet eventually or something? Or. No puppets? Maybe not. Armor. I definitely want to go with experimental genius for this one. I still have a CSR. However much we may wish it otherwise, there are still dangerous elements seeking to destroy a communist society. We must form an intelligence agency with strong powers of investigation to root out active and present threats, however. We cannot let such an organization become oppressive. The Committee for the Security of the Revolution will not be turned into a weapon against the people. Also, Windows 2. Nice. Cool. And. Because we can. An awkward moment. I've been a rowdy session in the Supreme Workers' Council, and Poseidon had been rated that bringing Sky Star along to watch was a mistake. She didn't seem to mind how everyone was eagerly jotting down notes in her seashell themed journal as the members argued. When Hardline got up to speak, Poseidon knew there would be trouble. As team comrades began, we must address a mistake which I believe this body made during the confusion of the early revolution, but which can be corrected if we act swiftly. We can hardly say that we are sweeping aside the old world if we are not allowed only capitalists, but the royalty themselves to swim among us. We allowed riotous temerity to win out that day, and so I must open or move to reopen the issue of the Queen Oval, and suggest we follow what every successful revolution has done and have the primary symbol of the reaction in revolutionary North Zebrica executed immediately. Poseidon glanced at Sky, so he noticed the young commissar started crying, even as Hardline was met with boos and hisses by most of the workers' council. Posada had shut this down at once, addressing him from the room, across the room. Comrades, please do not boo him, engage with him. Now remember Caramel Marks so that it is a sign of weakness of a people to hold their enemy at their mercy and not exact revenge. Exactly, General Secretary, it was a moment of weakness. Wait, Erinter Posada. I'm so sorry, esteemed comrades. That wasn't Caramel Marks. That was Bigolini. She heard a tiny giggle coming from Skystar and continued, launching into a tirade at the momentarily dumbstruck hardline. This body already made its decision, and it was in a moment of courage and clarity, not right as cowardice. The issue is closed. And the next time you propose murdering Comrade Skystar's mother, I would suggest you do it with more tact, or you may have to suspend your membership in the Supreme Workers' Council. Or perhaps you should join Comrade Chrysalis. Nice. Always training. Because a revolution is permanent. Could use more planes. Some more planes in general. 
Let's go and throw them on anyways. It's fine. There you go. One of us. Uh, you know what? I still said I wanted this one. There you go. We could have waited save ten percent, but whatever. Let's join the methods of war. Yeah, we haven't done that one yet. But this one gets an intelligence agency. Which would be nice. Oh, we still have 11 days left. Oh. Resistance. Eh. Compliance is going up, though, hopefully. 51. Wait. Oh, we know this court. Oh. Good. So it's going to take some time. Or we just keep doing this and get all three through this one. Get down to the mortal science of dialectic materials. Materialism. Uh, the Central Committee. A real revolution requires a central administration. While some comrades believe it should be limited and small, only anarchists seriously argue for a lack of any centralization. Therefore, the Central Committee will be created to ensure activities are controlled and managed on a national level. A worker's paradise. Healthcare, safe conditions, friendly co-workers, fair hours, and the abolition of the wage system. These are all common demands of the proletariat. As the dictatorship of the proletariat grows in power, we find ourselves in a position to answer these calls. Let us banish want forever and the immortal science of dialectic materialism. Caramel Marx was a great scholar, and more than that, she was a great pony. But she's dead, and to adhere to our ideas blindly is to adopt a new religion. We must always apply her methods to uh, her own writings and to every so-called leftist state in the world. Only then can we see true communism begin to emerge. During the revolution, Steel Feather gripped the pistol in his pocket like a talisman. Up ahead, Hot Breeze was given a speech uh, on the benefits of worker ownership, or something similar, as if any of that mattered in an heiress that had turned against the gods and the queen. He would probably be hanged for this, but he was ready. He would send a message to the people of Eris that not all the workers love the workers' dictatorship. And maybe his children wouldn't have to grow up in this nightmare. He got closer, uh, edging through the crowd, keeping his head down and mumbling excuses as he went. Finally, he had to clear a shut. He started to pull the gun out. Still felt a claw that settled into his wrist and a whisper from behind, don't. He rode around, trying to break free, and was met with a punch to the head. As he heard uh, gasps from all around, Steele finally understood what his enemy was saying. CSR, the Civil is suspected of terrorism. We'll be taking him into uh, <clears throat> custody. Still, they couldn't believe it. They'd known, and they let him get close enough to almost do it. Why? Did they want to make a public show of their power, or did they want to give him a chance to back out? He did not know. Um, and as he was dragged away, Still Feather thought of his home and how much he'd missed it. The speech continued like nothing had happened, of course. Beautiful. But the second vision. Posada sat in a chair in a strange vessel of white and blue. Before her, the starkly stunning, starry emptiness of space awaited. He looked, she looked over at her friends. Everyone's there, all wearing outfits similar to her own. I admit it, cracked, uh, sh chuckled. Race doesn't matter. Glass does. Thank you for helping me see the light. Perhaps I've been too harsh on revisionists. Uh, and opportunists hard admit it. It took us all together to do this. Um, the future is happy, isn't it, comrades? Posada replied. Now we sounded to meet your comrades among the stars. We did it, Posada. A sky star whispered, pulling into a hug. We made it into a better world. We united all creatures in any class conflict and brought a brighter future for every creature. Um, and she looked out of the great window out front. Two stars were orbiting each other in a beautiful dance. Posada woke up with a smile. As we were preparing our intelligence agency for everything to come. As we have actually built up a nuclear reactor already, which is great. We have to gonna continue to build up ourselves here too. We are losing political power. I might go back to partial mobilization. But political power doesn't isn't needed as much. We're still working on a worker's paradise and the moral science of dialectical materialism and whatnot. As we're trying to actually improve our army here too. So we got that one. What's up our aircraft designers? Small aircraft. Ooh, small airframes. Carrier airframes. More agility would be really good. Cast more ground attack. I think I might go with national, because this is a small airframes. So this should be applied to the cast anyways, right? Carrier fighter airframes. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's right. Maybe that's wrong. I might go with national one up here. Actually, it's probably a good idea to actually see what's going on in the world here. Um, the Griffonian Empire is huge. The Socialist Union of Evie is huge. We can send some volunteers, maybe. We can send up to nine. Holy cow. I don't know if I want to send on nine. We can send this general, maybe. Sugar coral. Just to see what's going on. Help spread the revolution worldwide, like we said. Are we out of guns? No, we're actually finally positive on all those guns, which is nice, finally. Uh, you could do that, but we need more casts, we'll need more planes. Oh, we didn't even got all this improved stuff, too. Huh. There you go. There you go. Nice. How's this looking? Um, we have Changing Lands versus Solar Empire. So they're all killing each other over here. Autocracy versus Autocracy. Ah, uh, but Stalingrad's over here, too, and they're dying. We could send volunteers, but... 
<laughs> We've only so much manpower to give. Nice. And we're here. It's gotta be true. But now it's fine. Defensive. Uh, I don't want to go where there's a lot of lack of supply, which is pretty much all over the place. So do something like that, maybe. See what you can do. As we have the Worker's Paradise. It's going to hurt consumer goods a little bit, but, you know, whatever. Oh god, they're just coming in. I just want you to show up and help hold the line. Yeah, we definitely need it. Depth, char depth charges and whatnot. Good. Worker's Paradise is nice. Um, since we're here, we're going to increase it by one more infantry division, maybe. Or battalion, I should say. Carbines, not good. Um, there we go. A puppet of history. The side of shovels of papers. Sitting in her desk uneasily. Comrades, guys, sir, do you know all the concept of the great creature theory? No, I don't, but I can guess what that's about. What it's about from the name, Skyser replied. It's the idea that some creatures are just born with intrinsic properties that let them shape the world, right? Well, yeah, I'll pass out a sputter. It makes sense. I mean, look at you. Look at all the work you've done. Look at what I did. Look at what the Elements of Harmony did. Even look at what the Storm King did. Very, very few creatures can influence the world the way the Princess Twilight can. That's just it, Posada replied. I don't believe in it. This guy sort of raised an eyebrow, but let her continue. I'm not any creature any special. I'm just a bookbinder who happened to fall into the position of a communist leader. Anyone could have been me. I mean, I'm a puppet of history. Uh, near net on the strings of material conditions. Sky Star looked to talk a long woman to think so. The mighty hate the Storm King. What, what, I, huh? He was just a puppet of material conditions too, right? The Storm Lands were in the state of economic development, such that primitive acquisition made sense, and ergo everything he did could have been done by anybody, or any Yeti. Sky Star shrugged, but you still hate him, why? He still chose to use excessive brutality. He ordered that the city's raised. Then he wasn't just operating on material conditions? Sky Star pressed. Were there other factors? Sada lowered his head. I suppose you're correct, but I still think anyone could have been him. Maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle. The ex princess offered. Creatures do have different talents and abilities, but the way these abilities wind up utilized is based largely upon material conditions. Nonetheless, they can still make choices about their actions and are still to blame if they act evilly. That sounds about right, Sada admitted. Getting schooled on your own materials, huh? Can we actually, like, move into here? Just b bomb rush them all? Uh, you know what? Or peace for now. Screw it, we'll do it anyways. But they are pushing in pretty freaking hard, man. Ministers, uh, they're always disagreeing, you know? Always. And we're holding the line actually pretty darn well over here. They love attacking us. I might actually stretch this line out just a little bit more. Just to get a little bit more army XP, maybe? I mean, we don't really need it too much, honestly. Because we're almost done with the land auction, but... And we can soak up quite a few casualties. Nice. Um, snorkels are okay. Uh, what do we want? Better guns. Okay, yeah, especially for, like, like, cruisers and whatnot. Yeah, these guys are not doing well. Oh, God. They just have enough divisions, and the divisions that they have, when they get, like, they almost get, like, overran. I want, I want to make these, but we just don't have, uh, like, some batteries yet. Torpedo data, huh? Fire control is fine, radar is fine, secondaries, four. We have enough naval XP, I'm not super concerned about it. Aircraft is fine. Rapid fire. Uh, we can put, throw some old torpedoes on there. Anti, some depth charges. There we go, that's pretty decent overall. It's not great. Get done. But it's a, it's a pretty good generic one. I don't know, I've always used the same kind of templates for everything here. Oh, now we're out of chromium again. We're literally the only thing holding them back at going to the capital, basically. That's kind of insane. Well, they lost the capital. Alright, well, time to retreat.
Get out. <sighs> we desperately try to hang on. God, they're, they're just literally just flooding through here. Oh, God. Can I recall my veterans? Can I recall them at all? Why can't I recall them? Are we stuck anywhere? Yeah, I'll get out. Right there. Jesus Christ, this is a slaughter. No, don't. No, they destroyed my division. God dang it. Are you kidding me? Why do we not have a recall button in Hoi 4 yet? Oh, my God. Why? Oh my god, there's some more. Oh. Uh, absolute right to learn. Any creature that desires to learn shall be able to. From preschool to graduate, all learning will be provided by, uh, for by the state. Training all technical skills will likewise be free. Reactions abroad might cause a gigantic waste of money we see as an investment into the future of the nation and the world at large. Exotic weaponry. Nuclear reactor construction speed. Crush lunatics. Warplan and Uranium. The cult egg and Cheruptera. Two evil states. Cheruptera is an insane cult that practices slavery, sapient experimentation, or worse. Colthaginian slaver lords profit off the backs of their subjects. We cannot abide by this existence of such states any longer. The North will be swept clean of reaction, the monsters will learn fear. Crush lunatics. Is there a more evil state than Cheruptera anywhere in the world? Maybe the changelings. The nightmare cultists are rightfully hated by all their neighbors, and the town is going to stamp them out. The workers of Cheruptera, your liberation is at claw. Or the fit of Cheruptera. The struggle is over and Cheruptera lies defeated, but as ever, more reports of insurgent terrorism floods in. We must determine its future. Shall we release it as a puppet state under a sympathetic leader? Send the population to be de-radicalized, or shall we pursue justice and punish these monsters? Decisions up to the General Secretary. What do you have over here, though? One party with many wings. Devolve authority to the workers. A state built on theory. The Stalingradian model. And create new design bureaus. Interesting. The North Zebrakin model. Towards post scarcity and founding new industrial bureaus. It's not bad. Um, devolve authority to the worker. One party with many wings. Devolve authority. I kind of want to go with this one because you get harmonic, socialist, anarchist, communist, and otherwise. All are welcome to the party so long as they abide by the rules. Ideological diversity is vital to the survival of the party, just as genetic diversity is vital to the survival of the species. Because even though you don't get. Oh, but you don't get this one. But devolve authority to the workers. Why should party bureaucrats hold authority over the people that they are meant to serve? It's absolutely vital that the workers champion, uh, the workers themselves hold their fate in their own fins. And so will put in place safeguards against repression and tyranny. The Supreme Workers' Council and the Office of the General Secretary hold the powers revoked as a precaution. Oh. Because I want us to have our own model. Because we won't be able to do this one. Do that one. The North Zebrican model. Still, Stalin was a great pony, but to call yourself a stal Stalinist. As to put up a hero to be worshipped instead of another traveler along the same path. We must always improve upon those that have gone before. A Stalingrad system fell to infighting and factualism after Stalin's death. We need to guarantee that that will not happen here, so our government will be built according to the fate of Chirup Terra. Beside hadn't slept in almost two days, the Presidium had been debating what to do with Chirup Terra, with the proposals getting more and more desperate as new facts came to light. Chirup Terra was a social society, engineered from the ground up for a thousand years to be ruthless as possible, arranged in a vast stratocracy. Given the crimes and the depths of their hatred for their occupiers, incorporating Chiruptera as an ordinary region was out of the question. Whatever options would adopt, it would take generations to uproot the Chiruptera system and ideology. Three proposals lay before the Presidium, each sickening in its own way. The first would represent a concession to absolute evil. There is a dissident moon speaker named Dusk Wayne who had somehow twisted the nightmarist's faith into something resembling liberation theology. Posada could withdraw the majority of the occupation force and put him in charge, although in order to administer Chiruptera, he would have to use much of the old power structure. That meant letting war criminals return to their... Uh, their old jobs and potentially setting up Chiruptera to rise up again and exact revenge. The second proposal meant ma remaining in Chiruptera and Quagmire for generations, the creatures of Chiruptera. It would be mostly spared death, but the nightmare's faith would be completely banned. The population of Chiruptera would have to attend re-education camps, where the next generation would learn of the evils of Chiruptera and system so that might, they might grow up to be better than their parents. It's guaranteed to be met with massive resistance and insurgencies, but its proponents argued that the first plan was naive and the third plan monstrous. Their option was genocide. Just would be applied in the harshest forms, with everyone above the rank of sergeant immediately shot. A little terror of massive proportions would raise Chirp Terra, and those who kept their lives would put it into permanent re-education camps. It was horrific. And bloodier than even the Storm King's methods, but it would finally annihilate one of the most evil nations in the world. Duskwain? Occupation will continue and intensify. Um, Chirp Terrans have chosen their fate. I like that one the most. Brutal oppression occupation of law. The Chirp Terran national spirits that boost resistance will be eliminated. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know which one to get, show the most mercy. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to choose the wrong one here. I want to do the first one, though. I mean, re-education sounds like the right one to do, though. Mm. What if we do the top one? I mean, we, I think I've seen this one before. The red apostate. Religious socialism. The Affairs Commission. Economic devastation. They have religious socialism. The long road to forgiveness. Denounce the past. People's legions. Red Moon Rising. Oh, God, I hope I chose the right decision. Also, we have let. I accidentally let the game running when I went to go make some food. And we're getting ready to fight Quagatai, but. When she heard the Lunar Legions have fallen, former Lieutenant uh, Silverspike had wanted to head into the hills with her husband, not I, and wage a holy war of resistance against the communists. A fever prevented her, and by the time she recovered, the Blue Army had locked down her village. As she returned to her little, her little home, the falls a gave dew and guava drop ran out, babbling about something about a radio announcement. She heard inside to hear whatever the bad news was coming. Silverspike held her foals tight in her leathery wings as they listened, silently praying that the communists hadn't finally decided to torture her village or take away their foals or that she wouldn't be on the next list of uh, war criminals their endless investigations had uncovered. The message she was greeted with was nothing that she had expected. My friends came to the voice of the infamous radical Moonspeaker Duskwing. It's time for us to leave our mistakes behind us. I've spoken with the communist leaders and they've agreed to withdraw the forces and provide amnesty for those who are still fighting in the hills as long as we can accept our crimes and move forward to build a better chair of terror. Guava drop hissed by Silver Spike Shushin. He'd always been at least slightly sympathetic to Duskwing's Dusk Wayne's message, even if he did border on heresy. We've been lost, my friends, for a very long time. I've been told to uh, old Tsenakatila. Our true faith is one of sharing and tolerance of difference. My nightmare uh, moon shelters all, her light shines upon all, but we have been blinded by grief at her defeat and by bitterness to twist us for a thousand years, so I implore you walk with me, walk with the hippogriffs, into a brighter future free of the poison of hatred. She knew she'd be outraged at the blood and heresy, but mostly she felt relieved that the occupation was going to end and not I would be able to come home. Her foes would grow up in a strange world, but not an intolerable one. The moon shone a little bright over Chirp Darrow. Let's do the rest of the sermon. R -r -r Sweep the remainder. Quagatai is a nation run by reactionaries for reactionary ends. It must be defeated for the sake of the lives under it, and the lives of those adjacent to it. Makawai has, Makawia has been long in a democratic land, but unfortunately, it's proven resistant to the communism and focuses on free trade. We'll seize these lands through diplomacy or combat as material conditions require. Form of the Exotic Weaponry Commission. Shakinaw is a powerful force on the battlefield, and a few things can impact as well as weapons I've never before seen. Super heavy tanks, APCs, helicopters, ground effective vehicles, and more will likely be investigated. And devoted funding to find and funding devoted to find the most effective methods of application. While this might prove costly in the short run, the long term benefits of all inspiring weaponry will be immense. Nice. Even more research speed, please. It is only 1015. Happy 1015, everybody. We're behind a year on industry. Not ideal. Yeah, we're just trying to build up this stuff here so we're good to go. It's going to take us some time. But we do have. A nuclear reactor built, which we're still working on next. And of course, they're still complaining to us. Fine, because we wanted to core some of these lands finally. Integrate Azur Hills. Ain Throtgorait. Nice, a third vision. Mercy, please. Poseidon regarded the captive, bound Storm King with disgust. You ravaged a continent, you broke countless lives and slaughtered countless moors, and now you have the audacity to beg for mercy from one of your victims? I'm not begging for myself, uh, he answered. I'm begging for my people. You wouldn't punish my family for my deeds, would you? No, Poseidon admitted, spitting the words like venom. Then why would you punish my people for it? Your people, she asked, uneasily. Confusing, slipping into, uh, confusion slipping into her voice. She looked down at the paper on her desk. It was an order to destroy the eye of the storm with nuclear weapons, then send in radiation-protected troops to exterminate any survivors. Poseidon woke up with drenched in sweat. Nice. Got a lot of army XP. Very good. Five racer slots. Never enough. Tobuk. Hopefully these guys make the right choice. The just-in-time system, huh? Sweep the remainder. I really hope we chose the right way. Also, we were forced to go this way because of what we had previously done. 
Um, construction, construction speed's not bad. Let's see. We're waiting to do this one real quick. So the fate of the High Command. Three of the six ponies who ran this monster system have been captured with only one fate awaiting death. The only question remaining is how execution is to be carried out. The guillotine and the firing squad are classics, but there are other options available. Well, should we wish for something more unorthodox? Also, we're trying to build a radar station up here because, well, we're going to need it for the Navy. I just want this one to get done first and then we'll go to war with these guys too. Because nothing like endless wars, right? Oh, we've got plenty of guns now. Beautiful. More gas. And... More fighters. Better military police is good. More engineers is fine. Industry is lacking, but whatever. Fuel just in case, because we do have more ships this time. Subjects. Good. Civilian oversight is nice. Oh. There you go. Still trying to build up around here, too. But let's got more cores now, thank god. Oof. And we're trying to focus on the Navy. We're focusing on carriers and subs. So, overall, not bad. And there we go. Well, Secret of the Nice is auto completed. Sure, Terrazzo has been a reclusive uh, hidden nation, but no longer. We have the modern intelligence agency, and we will penetrate their veil of secrecy. We'll look at their weak points and strike ruthlessly. Sure, Terrazzo will not escape the righteous workers' justice. As we go in, we should do fine, yeah. Oh, there goes terrorism. Whatever. I'm over it now. Um, I want to wait to do that one. The death of Chirup Terra. Chirup Terra is gone. Nightmares are subjugated, and the revolution has triumphed over the most evil regime known to creature kind. It's time to celebrate. A thousand years of planning were defeated by the strength of the workers. Nice. Uh, the dark side of the moon. Nightmares discovered horrifying things in the pursuit of victory at any cost. While we cannot abide by such cool experimentation, we can certainly benefit from their findings and utilize these discoveries against the other reactionaries. But it might be better to let these secrets lie buried with the researchers. In the end, Posada has a final say. Oh, exotic weaponry. Uh, the exotic weaponry commission has devoted to unconventional applications of military science. These were projects require investment to prove their worth, but we are confident that with so many avenues being explored, our military might, might be, will be secured. Any project that costs nuclear bombs may additionally require long-term investment from our nuclear stockpile. Patrick Salvo. One of the Terrafin's dearest desires is to see every infantry griff carry a weapon of the future. So we remain infested in the use of magical weaponry, but we must go further. Imagine recoil dampening spells, weapons firing three times as fast as traditional rifles, guns that fire the small explosive charges to effectively shoot around corners. Although the venerable slug flower will be very hard to approve upon, our scientists are sure up to the tasks. Well, might as well get started. Nice. And we probably want a couple planes here too. Casualties, 133,000 versus about 1,000. Decent, I'd say. Alright, so now we gotta figure what else we're gonna do up here. Nice. Oh, you know what? A couple marines. We could use a marine probably. Oh, whoops. There you go. And there you go. Field hospitals. Eh, yeah, that's good enough. Uh, Rio de Janeiro. Is that Brazil? It must be Brazil. Well, there's only one way we can we go directly into there. We can go here first. Honestly, we'll land there first. Take all four divisions and land there first. Everyone else train real quick. Oh, we're close. We just need a little bit less resistance. That's all we need. Ground facilities, nice. Go grab that one. Eh, you know what? Screw it. Go that one instead. You have the blueprints for it. Why not? Nice. Keep building. A new method of execution. Besides taking the new experimental reactor, savoring the feeling. What she was about to do would finally bring justice to the victims of the Cherub Terra. Even the other three lords and lady commanders who escaped their grasp would truly no fear. You'll appreciate this lightning charm. You're going to see just what discipline can offer. And Lunar Hail, I've, uh, I've heard you're a very faithful pony. Surely be great before this ultimate test of faith. 
You held the line well Stone Palace say today you get to see if your owner's office is strong. The situation or solution is simple. Phillies and gentle cults. Any of you who renounces your beliefs and goes on record saying that nightmareism is evil and all partisans are to stand down immediately, you will receive the kindness of a bulletin. Anyone who doesn't will be exposed to the full power of the reactor and die in an unimaginable agony. So who wants to betray everything they ever stood for? No one answered. They all glared at her with pure hatred. Finally, Lunar Hale spoke, bleated a faithless abomination. Oh, so that reminds me. We don't know the precise effects, but they should be very interesting. I'm sure you have plenty of time to, come to uh, contemplate them yourselves while... The door slams open, a breathless sky star rushed in. You can't do this, Posada. They might be evil, they might be monsters, but no creature should suffer this kind of torture. Supreme Workers' Council left their fate to me, Sky Star, Posada replied coolly, and they're going to get what they deserve. Sky Star dropped to the floor. Look at them, Posada. They're helpless prisoners. What about to do to them? It's the kind of thing they do, not us. Remember about how you spared my family. How you didn't have the capitalist shop. Please don't become a torturer. You feel that strongly about this, Posada inquired. Sky Star nodded silently, pleading. Posada frowned. She could choose to have them shot, showing mercy to the monsters who didn't deserve it, or she could go go, go ahead with the plan. And it's closing Sky Star as a friend. What should we do? The victims, the victims must have justice. I'm conscious to save you monsters. A bullet it is. Darn it. Yeah, after this one, Stallion, Grady, and Model. Still, Stallion was a visionary, and we must buy to abide by his plans. That does not mean we will copy Stalingrad blindly, however. Troubling elements of factionalism and personality cults have infiltrated the homes of the revolution. We must make sure that never happens here. Democratic centralism will be followed completely. Nice. Go and repair all ships. There's only seven of them that really need repairs, which is not bad. Airbase here, good. Is there one here for refitting and whatnot? Or repairing? Touch attack. Oh, we need this one too. That would be good to do as well. So we don't need you over here. We need you over here though. There you go. Day is death of Chair of Tarot. Dark side of the moon. And then we'll really start building up more nuclear reactors. Expand the North Zebrakin nuclear program. Time has finally come to unleash the power of the atom over our enemies. To achieve this, we'll require more reactors, more particle accelerators, and more centrifuges. Revolution in North Zebrakin shall be synonymous with atomic power. Beautiful. Boom, boom. Oopsie. Yay! Cores. Oh, they're allied with... Wait, hold on, hold on, before we do that. Oh, they're all allied over here. Okay, that's interesting. Eh, no problem. There you go. Ultimacio Radio. Oh, look at this. We stand today as masters of our own fate. We'll no longer be influenced by other nations, but we will not walk alone. We will stand together for our own fate. The workers and peasants shall never be under the yoke of the reactionaries again. As we stand united now, as a proletariat, they can no longer subdue us with the weapons, and we now have a weapon that is the power of the sun itself uh, usurped in a deployable form. So while the reactionaries might threaten to come and chain us again, we say if you come, you'll bleed on the sun and on the will of the people. Posada speech, 10th of June, 1015. Nice. How are we doing for ships? Oh, we need some chromium. Yeah, we could do some good chromium. Good. Alright, we are we over there? 
Almost. I'm gonna move around just a little bit more. It's fine. Good, good, good. Maybe a little bit more fuel. Technology. All right. Let's see what happens. And we do a nuke too. They immediately start attacking us. Like crazy. Nice. Nice. Already taking some ships and whatnot. Oh, my bad. See if we can go. And we just completely destroyed them. Oh god, we're just, just destroying all. Oh my god. How many? So, 15 destroyers, two convoys, two battleships, two heavy cruisers, a light cruiser, five destroyers, and five more destroyers. Oh my god. It's a complete slaughter. about what I would expect. They've already lost 120,000 people. Holy crap. You go there, you go there. The fate of Chirp Terran Science. The most nauseating crimes Chirp Terra committed were done by the Medical Science Division, the ML LMRD. Now this data was in our claws, we have to decide what to do with it. While well, the methods are were monstrous, say advanced medical science years ahead of us, and a group of former harmonists have persuaded per uh, persuasively, uh, arg and they've argued that there would be a great crime against their victims to burn the information they gathered on polio, malaria, and a dozen other diseases which could save so many lives. More controversial are the military applications of the research. While their combat drugs were undeniably effective, many of them were temperamental, and we only have a vague understanding of how these work so, since then, so many of the records were destroyed. Adopting these would mean turning our own soldiers into the tech, rats, tech labs, of uh, Chirp Terra's worst, even from beyond the grave, still, Terra Finn and many others in our own military science division have urged us to put aside these qualms and use these military applications, as doing so would make our troops near more effective and certainly save lives. Following even more controversial opinions proposed, Chirp Terran scientists advance medical science immensely, and the destruction of so many records, much of their data only exists in their heads. Certain technocratic elements have suggested that by offering amnesty to a mere half dozen of Chirp Terra's monsters, we could advance our own medical research dramatically. Maybe kept them on a tight leash, and obviously we would not let them use their old methods, but there's some appeal to putting these evil minds to working to build a better future. Terrapin, as well as numerous others, have objected to this idea, saying that they do not wish to work with such creatures, and that offering the amnesty was solely their entire department. We use anything we can to apply a civilian sphere to destroy the rest. Even the Miller applications could be useful. Uh. I don't know which one's the best one. I want to show Mercy. Hmm. I'm gonna go with that one. We'll offer them mercy. Because that's being the most merciful, right? Am I wrong? I hope I'm right. Kind of attacking here like crazy, yeah. Good. Just kind of hanging out, you know. 59 ships are out of capital ships. They have no ships, of course, and they have four. Yeah, we pretty much won that type of battle. They have a lot of manpower up there, though. These guys have a lot of manpower, my god. Oh, they're still preparing. Oh, that's fine. Let them prepare then. No worries. Go and repair real quick. Because we are in just constant naval battles. My god. Beautiful, though. Are they all considered major? No, only the Hindian Confederacy. So even attacking these guys means nothing. The Hindians need to die.
Well, let's see what we can do. Very nice job. Oh, I'll throw you here, huh? Oh, you're trying to attack you too, huh? Landing craft. Nice. Expand the program. Undersea reactors, previously deemed too detrimental on the environment, undersea reactors are rapidly proving necessary. It's absolutely vital to the success of the revolution that nuclear production be not inhibited by the enemy strategic bombing. A truly unassailable nuclear program will ensure our respect among the capitalist and imperialist nations of the world. Yeah, doing force attack is probably a bad idea. Oh well. It's going to hold. You know what? We don't even need to take out these guys, so we can just kind of hang out real quick. I won't have to go right here, though. So we don't lose that tile. Being said. Keep working on at least one nuclear reactor. Let's get at least one plane in there. See plenty of stages. See, pre see protest. Fine, whatever. Don't honestly really care. Let's get away for that one. We've got hydrocarbons. A little ahead of time. Better marines, I guess. Better reconnaissance. Nice. Getting our admirals a lot of naval speed and whatnot, so. Any more planes? Yes, yes. Do you any more? What we're about to do. To unleash an unholy hell upon these enemies. This guy's have a lot of divisions, though. It's taking a lot of. Oh, good, that's stuff. Casualties. How many casualties have they lost? Almost 800,000, holy crap. Total. Project Salvo. Oh, we actually made it, look at that. Oh. Huh. Uh, one of the many projects of the Exotic Weaponry Commission. Project Salvo was finally shelved today after a half a year of research failed to produce a next generation conventional assault rifle. Prototypes included triple barreled rifles, flashlit guns, cases ammunition, and all manner of other methods to increase the rate of fire, but all the goal of creating a rifle that could fire off a burst of three of three to five rounds before the recoil from the first shot was felt. This comes with great disappointment to Terrafin, who had hoped that by equipping every single soldier with advanced weaponry, Epigraphia could inspire its recruits and strike fear into the hearts of reactionaries worldwide. Darn it. I don't care how much it costs to restart the program, flesh for the future. Cases will prevail. Hmm. Project Shooting Star. Airplanes in the night sky are a powerful asset for the Revolutionary Air Force, but they're not enough. Rotary aircraft have the potential to cha totally change the nature of the airline battle. It must jumpstart the helicopter age and gain supremacy over the supremacists of the world. Why not? Cool. Um, uh, right there. And go ahead. Do what you must. Cool. I don't see reactors. You can build some. That sounds awesome to me. And extract uh, crystal extraction and synthesis. More reactors require more crystals, and we cannot rely on imports in a world filled with enemies. The crystal mines of Mount Eris must be expanded and must begin efforts to create synthetic crystals. Our nation needs crystals far more than rubber, anyways. Depleted uranium stockpiles. After nuclear refining is done, we have massive surpluses of depleted uranium left behind. A little strategic value, such residue may prove valuable at the tactical level. Depleted uranium is of comparable hardness to tungsten or chromium, and will make for excellent armor as well as munitions, including new design bureaus. Uh, a new state of the market-run cooperatives must be found, and in particular in the aviation field. Consolidated will focus on long-range aircraft, while Bellbreeze will develop the most agile planes imaginable, and towards post-scarcity. Uh, One of the greatest aims of a kind society is to abolish scarcity. While we're not yet in the place to eliminate scarcity of weapons, we can do so for civilian desires, at least in peacetime. This will be a significant drain on our economy, but it'll be worth it. Isn't the goal of communism a better life for the worker? And then a revolutionary north, Zebrica, rises. Burning the ashes of monarchism and capitalism, the revolution has been entrenched across the equator. Long live the workers of the world and long live international communism, which we're going to end it there. Last time we 
lost up here, but whatever. Um, if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue beating the crap out of enemies of communism. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.